Welcome to IntelliPath's YouTube channel. Today we will learn about quantum computing. John is the CEO of a company X. One day he was looking for ways to get ahead of his competitors. He calls a team meeting to discuss this. Zoe, a technical expert, suggests using quantum computers. Now John seems very interested, but he is still confused how it will be helpful. Then after the meeting, John talks with Zoe and asks her about quantum computing. Zoe explains to him that quantum computing is a tech that allows computers to do computing using properties of quantum states such as superposition and entanglement. The research on quantum computing began in 1980 when physicist Paul Binoff proposed a quantum mechanical model of the turning machine. In 1994, Peter Shaw developed a quantum algorithm of four factory integers with the potential to decrypt RSA encrypted communications. On 23rd October 2019, Google AI in partnership with US National Aeronautics and Space Administration NASA claimed to have performed a quantum computation that was infeasible on any classical computer. One thing to understand here is Quantum computers are not better version of normal computers. It's a completely different tech that uses quantum physics. It's just like how a light bulb is not better version of a candle. You cannot build a light bulb by building better and better ca candles. Light bulb is a different device that uses a different technology. Now how does a quantum computer work? Normal computer work on zeros and ones. We call them bits. Quantum computers use quantum bits or qubits. Even supercomputers can either be 0 or 1. But quantum computers can go beyond that. It can be in both state at the same time. A memory consisting of n number of bits of information has 2 to the power n possible states. This vector is viewed as a probability vector and represents the fact that the memory is to be found in a particular state. If there are 2 bits, that means we have 2 to the power 2 possible states. Those are 00, 01, 10 and 11. With quantum computing, it's possible to go beyond these states. This number grows exponentially with each extra qubit. 20 of them can already store a million values in parallel. As the transistors are getting smaller to the size of a few atoms, electrons may just transfer themselves to the other side of blocked passage. Now this is called quantum tunneling. Now how can quantum computers change our lives? First of all, it can increase the security in our devices, networks and even the overall internet drastically. When we send messages, we use private keys after encrypting the data. A hacker can get hold of these private keys and use it to decrypt the data. Suppose a private key is made using quantum uncertainty for encrypting messages. Then even if a hacker gets that private key, he cannot copy the key perfectly. Why is that? Because of quantum uncertainty. To put it simply, the key will be in superposition and that will prevent anyone from copying that private key. The hacker would have to break the law of quantum computing itself to hack the key. This tech is already being tested by banks and institutions worldwide. One more example is, quantum computing can also transform healthcare and medicine. To develop a drug, we do design and analysis of molecules one by one. And this is very challenging even for today's techs. That's because all the quantum properties of all the atoms in a molecule are very difficult to extract, calculate and describe. Even for our supercomputers. But it is possible using quantum computers as it operates using the same quantum properties as the molecule it's trying to simulate. It is possible to cure diseases like cancer and Alzheimer's. Imagine the amount of lives we can impact in the future. One of the greatest challenges involved with quantum computers is that it is very difficult to control or remove quantum decoherence. 
This usually means isolating the system from its environment as interactions with the external world cause the system to decohere. Decoherence is irreversible and is usually something that should be highly controlled. In simpler terms, this means that the system must be isolated from its environment. As quantum computers work with molecular structure, any interaction with the external world will cause that molecule to leave its position and then quantum computers will not work. One more limitation we have is that the tasks are pretty time consuming and may render some quantum algorithms inoperable. This is because maintaining the state of qubits for a long enough duration will eventually corrupt the superpositions. Operating time is proportional to error rate. So any operation must be completed much more quickly than decoherence time. Colliding particles generate a lot of energy. Because of this, quantum computers generate a lot of heat. They are stored in cold places around 0 degrees Celsius. Now because of all these reasons, quantum computers cannot replace our normal computers. That's all about quantum computing.